So we are out in the garage today for another repair video. This is a later model LC Smith Standard, um, particularly the Smith Corona Super Speed. Now this machine is almost mechanically identical to all of the older LC standards down to the proprietary LC ribbon spools. What we're going to go over today is how to replace key levers. Now the interesting thing about all of these key levers and type bars inside the LC Smith is that each one runs on its own individual round ball bearing. So when you snap off one of these bars, you actually need to replace the ball bearing itself. I pulled the camera off the tripod to get a closer look, and you can see each one of these is its own individual ball bearing. Now, uh, if you look underneath the type bars, when you pull them up, there's a row of screws. Each screw holds down two ball bearings. And generally, these parts here are hardened steel, and that's what snaps off, which is what happens over with mine. As you can see, that part sits in there, there's the bearing on top, and it completely snapped off. The other thing to note is that these type bars are interchangeable with the old model Corona standards, or the LC Smiths, but the type slugs are not. If you notice this machine, it shifts down, whereas the older ones shifted up. And we can see if we zoom in on these type slugs, real quick, the capital letter is on the type of the, on the top of the slug, whereas on the older models from you know the 1910s and prior, the capital letter is on the bottom of the type slug. So when you replace the bearing with a new key lever. Make sure you either resolder the slug or salvage the original key lever. Now getting these off the machine is really easy. Once you have loosened that screw right at the bottom there, you're able to take the actual bearing out of the machine like that. And that is just a simple clevis, clevis linkage, and you can pull that off. Now we'll take a closer look at the actual bearing itself. You can see the balls in there rolling around, giving it that frictionless and a very unique touch. Now looking at the actual parts, you'll see on the other side there's a screw. That screw needs to come out. It's a little bit tricky. You hold this piece in place, the um, actual anchor, and then take that screw out. On the other side you will notice a spanner screw. Once you have taken this one out, a slotted flathead screwdriver can take out this ring right here. Once that is done, all of the ball bearings will fall out. Now, down here as I replace the broken key lever, I have placed the base of the bearing down flat, lay the type bar on top, and I'm individually repositioning all of these ball bearings. Now, I didn't count how many there are in each one. You can do that. But basically, you want it so there's really no gaps between the bearings. And my, plot, my tweezers are slightly magnetic, so it's a little tricky. But, ah, uh, oh crap, I lost that one. But I have two sets of bearings to choose from since I also parted off the old LC Smith 8 type bar for the Q. And we're just going to slowly insert all of the bearings all the way around. I keep dropping them in the middle. And there goes another one. It's a little bit tricky, especially when I have to stand so far away from the camera. And one more. And we should be good. And I, I dropped it. And I dropped that one too. Wow. I'm on a roll. I dropped three in a row. Damn it. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, these, these, I've, I got like a big blob in the middle now, so I have to move this. Move it over. Press those aside. Okay. Let's try this again. There we go. And I actually think I can fit one more. Nope, can't. Okay. Let's get that out of the center, actually. Okay. Once that is done, we're going to take the um, that little spanner part, and that's what actually holds the bearings in place. Just drop that in very gently, very gingerly. And yeah, I know my flat hollow ground screwdriver is broken at the tip. I'm going to very slowly, gently screw that all back in place. A little bit tight. And I think it's too tight. 
or it didn't go in quite straight. So I'm going to fiddle with that for a second. Just take this top cover off again ever so gently. Look at all that extra room. I'm a real bad judge of space. Oh, I dropped it in the middle again. I, now, and I believe this is the original one that I took off of here, but it's not, ah oh shit. It's not the original one to the actual bearing. This is why you don't use magnetic screwdrivers. People keep saying, uh, why don't you have a magnetic screwdriver? That's why. I'm going to stop this and reseat everything and I will come back to you. Okay, so I got the bearing back on finally and it is moving freely. And now we just flip it over, take the screw that we removed. See, this one looks a little cleaner. And again, I have another broken screwdriver. It's a bad day today. And we're just going to tighten that on down inside, gently. And after that, we should have this whole ball bearing assembly nice and smooth. Out of focus. Let's zoom in. Yeah, manual focus lenses, but I got good macro. And we got this one. This one's actually a little bit looser, so I'm going to do a little bit more adjusting before I install them back on inside the machine. Okay, so zoom back in, and as you can see, the key lever is now completely free to move. So we're going to take these um, and install them back inside the machine now. Alright, we've got somewhat of a good angle here now. I'm going to take the A-type slug and slot that in. Let's flip this up. It's going to go right in its little slot there, pressing all the way down until it seats firmly. Going to ignore the clevis linkages for now, and we're going to take the Q type bar, which I have replaced the bearing on, and also slot that all the way down. And as you can see, even though this is from a Smith 8 from like the 1910s, it fits just fine in this 40s era super speed. Now we're going to take the long reach screwdriver, thread it in here, and just tighten up that bracket real good. That one right there. You can see it with my broken screwdriver. I have better screwdrivers, I promise. Um, then, oh, I found my better screwdriver. It was literally just sitting here in the corner in front of my face this entire time, and somehow I missed it. I spent like 10 minutes looking for it, and, and let me show you where it was. See if I, it, it, it was right here the entire time. Okay. All right, that's over. Let's get this back, focus up. Okay, uh, I forgot what I was doing. Yes. So the clevis linkages, we're going to tackle the A first. If I can get my fingers out of the way to show you, I'm just going to take the flathead screwdriver in there, twist it so it opens up, and place that right on that slug area. And as you can see, it works just fine now. So if I can do this one-handed, slide it in between the clevis linkage, twist it to open it up, then maneuver it over the post and close it again. And now we have a somewhat working Q key. Oh, it works good. I need to adjust it in the type guide because it's getting a little bit stuck. And if I'm being perfectly honest, that's how I broke it in the first place, is I was applying a little bit too much pressure here to get it in there. But the great thing we can do now is if we come back down and focus, I can loosen up this base again and just gently, gently raise up the Q just a little, little bit. Alrighty, and that's that. The Q key. Ah, damn it. I'll fix that. The Q key and the A key. This one, this one's the A key. Q. A. They're working just fine now. While the Q's not, it likes to stick like that. But I will take care of it. It needs a little bit of heat and a little bit of bending. But after that, this machine is ready to be cleaned up, polished, and put back together. And that is how you reinstall the type bar bearing on an LC Smith. This video is just shambles. Oh my god. Okay, we're done.